Hello and welcome to a first post POV. Here in the national capital, one bit of news is dominating the cycle, and that's that of pollution. As the AQI keeps rising, everyone is asking the same question. What is the solution to this problem that this city faces every year? Now the government is mulling something new. Cloud seeding or artificial rain to improve the air quality in the national capital. Basically, you drop some elements or, uh, risk or chemicals in the air and this triggers artificial rain over the city. The question is, how exactly does this technology work and will it be able to create a long-term fix for this long-term problem? Let me put this question to my guest, Professor Manindra Agrawal, who's the director at IIT Kanpur, and he's also leading Delhi's cloud seeding project. Thank you so much, Professor, for speaking to us on First Post. Pleasure to join. Now, the date is October 29th when this particular project will be implemented and when we are expecting the artificial rain to be triggered. Can you just walk us through what the process will be on the 29th? Well, as it happens, uh, we are uh, planning uh, seeding later today itself and also tomorrow because there is, there is some cloud cover which is available. So let's see how it goes. So how exactly... Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. How exactly does the process work? Because I understand you are going to be flying planes over the air and then dropping certain chemicals into the air and that's how the rain happens. Could you just explain that process to us? Right. So we fly an airplane uh, which has uh, on its wings what we call flares. Flares are uh, basically filled with uh, a so very finely ground salt mixture and also some... Uh, uh, small amount of uh, explosive so that you fire, lit, light a fire, so then you get a uh, uh, fire going which uh, increases the air temperature around it and then this salt mixture is injected into that air. Because of the heat, the air rises upwards into the cloud. So we are flying the aircraft below the cloud. And the, with this also takes a salt mixture into the clouds. Now, salt mixture, as I mentioned, has a very finely ground uh, uh, particles of diameter around four to six microns. So at that tiny uh, size, in, around each particle, certain water starts condensing. And uh, once enough water condenses around a particular particle, it becomes a water droplet, which comes down as a rain. Right. So that broadly is the principle. Right. Now, how do you decide when you decide to trigger this? Uh, because like you said, it was 29th, but you're planning to do it earlier in the week. What are the sort of parameters you look for before you take those plane into the air? Well, fundamentally, one needs availability of clouds with a certain minimum moisture content. The higher the moisture content is, the more likely it is to rain. If it is extremely high, then it will rain anyway. You don't need to do cloud shading. If it is extremely low, then uh, it won't rain no matter what you do with it. So it's in between uh, part that is at risk by the cloud shading. Right. Now, have you yourself or your team done this process elsewhere and has this cloud seeding idea been done in other cities, particularly to tackle air pollution or is this the first time you're attempting something like this? In my knowledge, this is the first time it is being attempted in India for tackling pollution. There have been several seeding experiments in the past, in particularly in Maharashtra and Karnataka, for uh, drought relief purposes. Right. So this, yeah, go ahead. Right, now when it rain, when the rain is triggered and we understood that salts are injected into the clouds, it condens creates condensation, then the rain falls down. But how does that translate into the air quality improving or the dust particles coming down? What is that process? Are we expecting the dust to basically dissolve in the rain? Are we expecting winds to accompany it? What is the process once the rain is triggered? Well, that's uh, very simple. You know, whenever it rains, the rain droplets, as they fall down, they hit this uh, pollution particles along the way, their trajectory. 
and all these particles which it hits, they get kind of stuck with the droplet, and which falls down on the ground, and therefore washes away the pollution particles which are there in the air. And the amount of the particles that it removes depends on the amount of rain that is there. So the more the rain, the lower will be the pollution then. Now, we are talking about the PM 2.5 particles, I'm assuming. So are we to think that the artificial rain does not affect, say, the toxic gases or the other chemical industrial emissions in the air? It only ta tackles the particulates in the air. Is that true? Yes, I, it only uh, affects the particulate matter. If there is a gas in the air, I don't think it will have much of an impact. Right. Is there anything the citizens should know about this process once it happens a couple of days down the line? Is there any precautions that people should take? Or is it just, just another case of just a normal rain, but in this case it's been triggered by scientists? Is that the only difference? Yeah, exactly. That that's would be the case. There is nothing special that one needs to be concerned about. Right. There is some criticism in the scientific community about this process. Now, a uh, couple of scientists at the Delhi Center for Atmospheric Studies, I believe you've heard, I'm, I'm sure you've heard this, called it a gimmick, and one of them also called it a snake oil sort of solution. Why do you think the scientific community is so split when it comes to this technology, despite the fact that it's been used in other parts of the world as well? What explains this split in the community? Well, let's see, if the moment you view cloud seeding as the long-term solution of pollution problem, uh, then it raises this kind of comments uh, because uh, it is not a long-term solution. It is only an emergency case solution. That is, you have high level of pollution and you can't do anything about it. So you, and there are clouds available which you can seed and reduce the pollution level. Long-term solution has to be to ensure that uh, pollution sources are controlled. So therefore, cloud seeding should never be viewed as a long-term solution to the problem of poll pollution in a city. It is, uh, as I said, a and kind of an SOS measure. And also associated with it is a, a certain probability of success. It's not guaranteed that it will succeed because, as I said, it really depends on availability of clouds with a reasonable amount of moisture in it. So I, my guess is this is what has led uh, some of the scientists to uh, give a negative comments about this. Now, several governments have mulled doing this and it's finally happening. So do you think this could become like an annual thing where every time the pollution gets worse in Delhi, the government resorts to cloud seeding? Or do you think that this is something that should be reserved for one year to see how it goes and then tackle the root causes? As someone who's leading this project, how would you like to see cloud seeding used to tackle pollution in the future? I would like to see cloud seeding never being used uh, because uh, Ideally, if we can address the pollution sources, we will not have a situation where there is a high level of pollution and one needs to start thinking about cloud seeding. But until that happens, but I understand that it cannot happen overnight. So until that situation is reached, cloud seeding as an SOS solution is available. It's a, it's a reasonably well-proven technology. There is nothing uh, you know, mis no mystery about this. It has been done in other countries. It is being done in other countries. So it is possible to do this. And it can help at times. Right. Now, I was just reading online and there are a couple of doubts that keep cropping up about this. So I'll just quickly fire them off to you and you can reply. The sure. first one was a lot of people were wondering if the cloud seeding is done over Delhi, is there a possibility that the weather in the nearby regions, say in Haryana or Uttar Pradesh, could also see slight changes because of what, what's being done over the national capital? Is it that precise or do you expect some of the fallout to be felt in adjoining areas as well? It is. See, this is never a precise uh, uh, experiment because you know we see the clouds now clouds will move uh, there are all kinds of factors that cause the clouds to move so if the cloud moves uh, then the you know the rains 
could be in Delhi, it could be in neighboring areas of Delhi too. Right. Another question that people were asking is about the long-term effects if this continues to be, like you said, it shouldn't be used as a long-term solution. But if it does happen, a lot of people have questions about what the long-term impact of injecting these chemicals into the clouds and then that coming down as rain could be on say, humans and even like agricultural land. Are there enough studies or do we know enough about what the long-term impact of artificial rain could be? No, there are no long-term studies as far as I am aware of. There have been some studies uh, which have been done to see if some amount of cloud seeding and rainfall happens, what changes have been found in the ground. And it's primarily silver iodide that people are concerned about because large quantities of silver iodide can be harmful. But in these all these studies, it has been found that the amount of silver iodide released is negligible. And that makes uh, sense also because as per our uh, process that we have designed, if we seed about a 100 square kilometer area, we'll use less than one kilogram of silver iodide. So that comes to less than 10 grams of silver iodide over one square kilometer of area. So that you know, per square meter content is so small of silver iodide that it becomes negligible. So even if done over multiple cloud seedings, uh, I don't see why it is going to cause any significant uh, challenge. But uh, like I said, one anyway should be striving to ensure that cloud seeding is not used permanently. Right. Now finally, one thing a lot of people have been asking about is how quick the relief could be once this process is done. Could you give us how quickly the air is expected to clear or how the rain is expected to impact the air quality once this uh, seeding is done by the plane or the drone? See, that again depends on the moisture content. The higher the moisture content, the faster it will rain. But one expects uh, that within a couple of hours there should be, if there is to be a rain, it will happen within a couple of hours. Right. I think the biggest takeaway from this conversation has been that this is supposed to be an SOS measure. It's an emergency policy and it's not something that should be considered as a long-term fix to pollution. For that, you need to address the long-term problems of pollution like industrial emissions, cars and so on. But thank you so much, Professor Agrawal, for speaking to us on First Post and answering some of those important questions about this process. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you. Want the facts? The latest developments? News that gets straight to the point. Well, we've got all three just for you. This is First Post Live, a brand new show. Your window into what really matters. Don't miss it.